Secondary and tertiary alcohols can be dehydrated, so that's the elimination of water, to form alkenes if treated with a strong acid and heat. And so, much like the reactions we saw with alkyl halides previously, the order of reactivity for elimination reactions depends on the stability of the alkene that you form. The more substituted of an alkene, uh, the lower that transition state energy, and so the faster the reaction. So we see that tertiary alcohols will undergo elimination reactions faster than secondary alcohols, which will undergo elimination reactions faster than primary alcohols. S tertiary and secondary alcohols undergo the E1 mechanism, while primary alcohols that cannot form stable carbocations will eliminate via the E2 reaction mechanism. So let's take a look at a few quick examples here. So I am going to start by drawing a tertiary alcohol. And so there is a tertiary alcohol. So if we wanna do the E1 reaction, we're gonna heat this up with a strong acid, so sulfuric acid and some heat. We want to look at what the major alkene product is going to be. And so the first thing that we need to do to do either an elimination or a substitution reaction of an alcohol is you need to take that really bad leaving group and convert it into a good leaving group. So what happens with sulfuric acid? It is a strong acid and the alcohol can act as a base. So your alcohol will abstract a proton from the strong acid and this will give us a good leaving group. So we took a leaving group that would be hydroxide if that were to leave, so that's a terrible leaving group. And now we've made it to something that if it leaves will become a neutral water molecule. And so this is an E1 reaction with this tertiary alcohol. And so to start that E1 reaction, the leaving group will leave. And once it leaves, it will form that relatively stable tertiary carbocation. And so the next step will be to remove a beta hydrogen. So in an E1 reaction, you will form the most stable alkene that you can form. That's gonna be the fastest pathway. So we've got beta hydrogens on this N-methyl group, and then we've got equivalent beta hydrogens on these two positions. I say equivalent because we have a plane of symmetry in this molecule. So we're gonna remove the hydrogen that gives us the most substituted alkene. So I am gonna use this beta carbon. Again, I could use this carbon. It has two hydrogens as well, and we give the same product. Um, so we've generated water here. Water can be a base. And this is going to remove one of those two beta hydrogens. And then those electrons are gonna come in to form the alkene. So we form the most substituted alkene as the major product. So most substituted alkene. And that will be the major product. With E1 reactions, you don't have to worry about where that proton is relative to the leaving group because it's a stepwise reaction. Okay, so this is a mechanism with a tertiary alcohol. Uh, the mechanism with the secondary alcohol is gonna be the same, but it does give you the possibility of a carbocation rearrangement because if you have a secondary alcohol, your initial carbocation would be secondary. So I am gonna start with a really similarly structured um, alkene. So I'm gonna put a methyl group up here and I'm just gonna put my alcohol down here so that it's secondary. And we're gonna heat this up with sulfuric acid. And so the first step is gonna be identical. Your alcohol is going to react with that acidic hydrogen. So there's the sulfuric acid. The lone pairs of electrons on the alcohol make it a good base. So we're gonna take that acidic proton and break this bond. So again, converting a poor leaving group into a good leaving group. And now that it is a good leaving group, it is going to leave. And so we will get a carbocation. So here is the initial secondary carbocation that is formed in this reaction. 
And if a secondary carbocation or any carbocation can rearrange to become more stable, it will do so and it will do so quickly. So this would happen before a step like this sort of thing could happen. Um, and so we've got this tertiary center next door. There is also a bond to hydrogen that was implied. We weren't showing that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is a hydride shift and that's gonna move the carbocation to that tertiary center. And so now we have actually the exact same carbocation that we had in the previous example. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and again, take a beta hydrogen from the carbon that will give us the most substituted alkene possible. And so both of these alcohols would give you the same alkene as a product. Okay, so what we've seen is we need acid, we need heat, um, we're gonna form the most substituted alkene as the major product, and particularly with secondary alcohols, um, we need to watch for carbocation rearrangements. Um, in this case, uh, we didn't change the carbon skeleton, but sometimes if we move, say, a methyl group, Instead, you can actually have the carbon skeleton rearrange. Um, so you always wanna watch out for that. Um, so even if you're not asked to draw a full mechanism, I recommend always drawing the cation so you can take a look at it and see if it's likely to rearrange.